Hello everyone and welcome by the Orchid Saga. So yeah, today I have an, uh, a repotting video. Um, it's going to be about this beautiful Brasso Cattleya Binosa. And I'm filming this because we also do care clips about this one. And the last time I had it in bloom, so it was, uh, was very special, beautiful blooms. But as you can see, when I had the first adaptation into cell watering, it did lose quite a lot of these older canes, dried up. But then it started making new ones, and it did uh, fairly well. And it even did start uh, to bloom on two canes. I had two blooms uh, on one cane and one bloom on another. I think it was this one. But... Um, I saw that in winter that it did lost uh, quite some roots. So therefore I thought um, I, this one needs a repot and I will uh, put it in my new setup, a sort of new setup. I just briefly uh, did talk about it in my last blooming update of March. But this is basically it. I, we have obviously a outer pot and I'm using a, a net pot as you can see with all those little teeny tiny holes in it. So that will go in here so we have more air around the roots but also still in self-watering because you already saw it i think this is a wick i just put in and this is at the height it will be in this pot so you can see we have a bit of room there where uh, the reservoir is and where my thumb is here uh, something about that um, and then the pot is above the reservoir, so I think in winter, at least I hope, for the more warmer liking orchids, uh, in the pot it will stay a little bit uh, higher temperature wise than the reservoir. At least that's the idea. With more air around it, and the air is a nice temperature, it's around 80 degrees, 18 degrees, but the water is sometimes around 15, uh, because yeah, that's how it uh, works. Um, I guess <laughs> but for some it's just a just a little too cold so this is uh, my new setup for the more warmer growers so we uh, we uh, shall see and I will give you a uh, example in uh, in the end of this video because I have a few cattleyas already potted up this way and they uh, seem to like it so but um, that's for a, a later concern first of course we need to get our orchid out of the pot and let me quickly grab a, a little bowl that I like to use to uh, put the media in and now we're gonna get it out of the pot and now it's uh, it's a very nice day so I can feel the warmth in here so this is the typical weather that they like but let me show you we have maybe some alive roots but I hope you can see it but there are quite a lot of brown roots roots that were okay but started to get brown so i'm not sure if the temperature is the problem but i suggest that could be a problem so only way to find out is just to change the setup to grow it on this uh, spring and summer with a, a strong root system and then uh, see how we do next year and uh, next uh, spring and if it uh, if the setup is better so I'm now trying to get it out easily so I will probably make some noise and there it is to reuse this one uh, well uh, we have a look in a minute maybe I need another one but it doesn't matter so yeah sadly quite a lot of dead roots this feels firm this is the only one that is alive like it uh, well, it seems the only, to be the only one um, Yeah, sad, very sad. So I put this away. And now we start working with a sterilized scissor. Cutting off old roots. Well, let's first check 
the roots. Yeah, this one is there. So I will uh, cut that one off. Of course. Let me see if I can adjust the camera a little bit so you can come in a little bit closer. Whoops, don't try to make you dizzy. But I think... Yeah. Whoops, I'm sorry. This is a little bit better. So what I do is just I grab a root and I squeeze in it and when it's soft or uh, moist moist uh, yeah you can already see it i think there's some moisture coming out of the roots so that's a dead one it needs to be nice and firm this one is still firm on the top but it had some branches here that are looking very brown yeah they were not that soft this one is still alive at least yeah this part is broken off but the other part is still alive so uh, I leave that on of course yeah this whole root is dead so I can try to cut it at the base as closely I think there it is As you can see a thick root um, still in frame, yes. These are discolored, but they are still firm. Those are the newest roots, at least parts of them, so I don't cut them all off. But I do try to cut off the dead portions. Yeah, it did grow well some roots at a certain time. But this is still firm as well. And then quite a lot of them died off. So yeah, like I said, I think it was the cold temperature because not all of them are doing it. Luckily, so that tells me that it's not, not completely bad, but just a little bit too much, maybe. Once again, it's, it's a suggestion. Oh, we have a few nice ones here. Let me, uh, whoops, I'm sorry. Here you can see probably the lighter roots there. Those are alive. So let me uh, now take off the uh, back end of this plant. I think this whole section can go away. Whoops, I'm out of frame. This whole section, I need to uh, zoom out a little bit. So this part can go. Let me I drop a little piece of pumice. Um, so I grab my clippers and try to find a nice spot. I think it's around here. Now these, yeah, those can go as well. So this whole back end of the plant, whoops, there it is. One nice clean cut, that's the best if you need to cut. Try to do it in one stroke, get it over with. <laughs> and now I see a little bit more of the root system and I see a little more uh, dead roots that I just now can reach a little bit easier with my scissors. So I will take them off as well. I try to uh, avoid as much rotting material going back in the pot, of course. And then, like we said, I hope this one will uh, grow on a nice root system again. Because it's a beauty, it's absolutely a beauty. Binosa. And I had a link already in my video, but yeah, if you like, you should check it out. Blooms are fantastic. So, we'd like to keep this one. Um, let me check. We have a few more here, I think. And there it goes. So yeah. I hope this one uh, will agree with her new setup. But like I said, in the end of the video, I uh, really uh, would like uh, to share with you so far, because I have some beautiful results so far 
while I'm checking the last roots here and there. Some do look very dark, but I discussed it earlier in other videos. It's not always means that they are dead, but you can feel it when they're soft. Then uh, they are absolutely dead. But luckily we have a few alive ones, so that may help this, uh, this orchid obviously to grow on. And we have already a start of a new growth here. Just, just above my finger. It's the first sign. I hope this one will make a new one as well. I had two growing directions, but maybe because it's been set back and decides to uh, only push one new growth up. And sometimes it's just the best, even though we like more new growths, but sometimes the orchid knows better what is needed. And sometimes it's... Um, sparing some energy because of a uh, lacking root system <laughs> so yeah and we have some beautiful moss here as well i really like that so i leave that on of of course so yeah let me uh, quickly clean up and then i will be be back and uh, we will uh, put it in her new setup So I'm back, I just uh, grabbed my uh, alcohol, so I will uh, clean up the tray just a little bit with the alcohol, just in case, even though it's the same orchid that we are uh, going to put up, but um, yeah, like I said, you never know, try to uh, be as clean as I can while I'm uh, <laughs> getting the uh, alcohol right in my nose. Okay, this is a very uh, nice long uh, wicking material. This is the Cintiq, but the longer version, and it really wicks very well, so I really uh, like this. Um, let me grab a water meter, because the one that I had is fairly long, and I can use it in a different setup a bit better. And I have more of the smaller ones, and that will do the job as well, so uh, that's a little bit easier for me. Uh, let me check. Yes, this media is inorganic, so that's okay. Not sure. I didn't get any every root out, but oops, I think I can uh, reuse it. Um, yeah. Going to fill in a little bit in the bottom like this, and really watch it if I have some other parts of the roots. I will take them out, but it's fairly clean, so and I don't wash it now. I will wash the the leftovers, but um because then I need to use it for a different orchid. But for this one, it's the same orchid, so it doesn't matter that much. So let's uh, try to find a nice place for this orchid. And I try to uh, put in both. The, here's the new growth, so that's nicely centered in the pot. This is the other one. And you never know, it may shoot out a new growth, so that needs to be fairly in, fairly in the middle as well. So I try to lean it over a little bit this side, so I have that new growth as well. Almost in the middle, very centered in the top. And now I'm just filling up again with, uh, with the beautiful inorganic media. And for this one I have a mixture of lacca and pumice. And as you probably know, I pref prefer the pumice. But lock, lack, lock up. <laughs> lack up works well as well. Oops, I'm forgetting the wick. That's very handy. So I tap the pot. And obviously, the rest of the wick I will now place in the pot as well for avoiding a top dry layer. And so far, I think it works very well. It's almost like a bird nest for these little pots. I just wrap it around it. So it's very moist and again, very airy. And that's exactly what we want, of course. So 
Yeah. Luckily, this media is still uh, very clean. I even have some ceramics in it. I didn't notice. <laughs> But I, uh, so this is a mixture from uh, basically everything that I <laughs> had, that I used. Probably some reused media. In that case, I don't pick every part out because I, I couldn't be uh, bothered with it, to be honest. <laughs> so I just reuse it and it works. It's all inorganic. So that's, uh, that's the purpose. I'm just tapping it a little bit because I want to give this a uh, top dressing with, um, my new pebbles and they look fairly dark when they are uh, wet but they will turn up gray more grays when they uh, are setting steady uh, <laughs> getting uh, drier and i really like the look of it and we call them basalt stone and i think it's in english also basalt but it's Maybe you pronounce it a little bit different, but if you look up basalt, you will find this. If you cannot find it, don't uh, be afraid to ask. I, I'm happy to give you a link uh, for any of my products that I use. So if I didn't uh, talk about it too much or you have no idea where to find it, please let me know. I'm happy to help. No problem. And I don't like lacquer on top. Because lacquer dries out very quickly and it, it still wants to absorb, absorb uh, some moisture. And of course, if there, if there is any root, I, I do not have good results with that. And I found that the pumice isn't doing that. Um, getting, trying to get moisture out of a root, for example, when a root is growing on top of the media. With the lacquer, like I said, it dries up and it will uh, try to get some moisture out of the root. But the pumice, uh, I have no problems at all. So I really uh, like it. It's a little bit softer, so to speak. This is a piece of pumice. And that's what I like. I really enjoy working with, uh, with pumice. So that's it. I think it looks fairly beautiful. Once again, I hope it will take off. I, ha I, I have a good feeling about it. <laughs> Oops. Well, talking about good feelings, I have a new growth there, so I shouldn't put pebbles on top of that new growth, obviously. I've done this so many times, and still these little peep accidents <laughs> still happen. I should have known better, but it's still okay. I didn't damage it, luckily. But uh, it's still there. I don't know if you can see it, but I think it will be fine. And let's hope that this cane does uh, decide to grow on as, as well. But like I said, if it only will wants to put energy in the, this one growth, that's okay, of course. There's a good reason for it, but you never know. So let's uh, put a tag in. My new tags. I was very inspired with uh, Ed's Orchids, with these beautiful tags. Uh, with the black tags with uh, white letters. And then recently I heard uh, Roger talk about it. He is also uh, changing his text and, and I still hadn't uh, ordered them. And I was like, now I have to do it. Luckily I did because the, some of the Cattleya tags that I used are completely gone. I cannot, yeah, the tag is there, but the text isn't on it anymore. So luckily I still know which orchid it is, but otherwise it would be a disaster on, on the end of this new year. So I'm going to put this orchid back in the greenhouse and I will uh, grab a example just to show. So I will be uh, right back. So here we are again. And this is obviously a, a very nice growing orchid. So I did take a beautiful example, but this is the Durigan, I don't know if you can see it, I think you can with the new tag, but this one is really enjoying the new setup. And what I do like is this, it's very thick. The base of the new growth is, is very thick. So I think it's getting uh, stronger and stronger, but let's put it out. And I, that's why I didn't take the camera into the greenhouse because it's very <laughs> hard for me to do this one hand, even with two hands, because I don't want to damage those roots. You can see already roots coming out of the pot over there. And we even have a beautiful set of roots here, as you can see. So this one so far does really enjoy this new setup. 
very high moisture, very high uh, humidity around the roots. And as you can see with wicks and a reservoir. And so far, I th really think that uh, some of these warmer growers do really enjoy this setup. But once again, first I need a winter. And then after that winter, I can really decide if this really works. But uh, the first, of course, is that they take off and grow new root system. This one, uh, root system, this one is doing that. So uh, this will be a great example to check uh, next year and also that we know. So. so that's a quick update here on my uh, new uh, setup and obviously uh, a look at the Dibinosa. So let's hope, fingers uh, crossed, that, uh, well actually this, uh, fingers crossed, <laughs> that it will work. And uh, I think we'll, uh, uh, I'm in time, it didn't uh, have too much damage, but we shall see in time. So uh, thank you for watching, and as usual if you have any questions or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I hope to see you at one of my next videos. Bye bye!